Hey everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. I'm Sriram and this video is part 9 of the Pac-Man game dev series where we recreate the famous arcade game on scratch. If you haven't watched parts 1 to 8 then click on the card up here and just a reminder if you are stuck during any part of video then you can head over to the downloadable files link in the description box below, download just the file that you need and then continue. Before I proceed, I want to congratulate you for making it all the way because this is going to be the last and final video in the series. By the end, we will have a complete Pac-Man game that anyone can enjoy playing. Alright, that's very exciting and let us begin. First, go into the stage and then create a variable called player1. This variable will be used to store one of two possibilities. After the game is over, the player might have either won or he may have lost. In the first case, this variable will be set to yes and in the second case, it would be set to no. Initially, set it to no and this should be pretty self-explanatory. Alright, that's it for this stage. Let's now move on to the warning sprite to get it out of the way as it's very simple. When we program the big food, we broadcasted two messages show warning and remove warning. The shows and hides here must just correspond to the same. On receiving init grid, go to x210, y130 and then hide. Duplicate and on receiving the message show warning, show. Duplicate this once more, this time for the remove warning message and then hide. That is it. Clean up and now we can go into the pink ghost. There is a small mistake that we must correct and we must also add the unique features that make the ghost move to the different corners of the screen. First, scroll down to the set indices function and change the indices to 341, 265, 315 and 258. As you can see, these will be the four points on the top right of the screen. Okay, now that's done, so go to the right where we can move randomly in the prison. We need to give some variation so that the ghosts are not always overlapping one another. There's one small mistake here where I forgot to change the costume, so first fix that. Then change x by 0.6, then negative 0.6, then 0.6 and finally again by negative 0.6. Okay, now scroll up and go to the out of prison code. In the third condition, we need to change the messages that correspond to the pink ghost. So broadcast pink death first. In the second instance, broadcast pink death and in the third case, broadcast pink death end. Great. That's the modifications for the pink ghost and let's move on next to the blue ghost. First, as usual in set indices, change them to 37, 113, 49 and 106. Next, we need to do one more additional thing. In the start game message, go to an X tile of 10 rather than 9 in the first instance. We will have the blue ghost oscillate on the right and the yellow ghost on the left. As usual, we need to change the random movement in prison. This will be slightly different. First, change x by negative 0.6, then 0.6, then negative 0.6, and finally 0.6. After this, scroll up to the out of prison code. Change the first message to a new one called blue death and wait, the second one to blue death tick and wait, and the last one to blue death end and wait. And that is it. We can now go on to the yellow ghost. Once again in set indices, change the numbers to the following. 21, 97, 47 and 104. This is at the bottom left. Now scroll right and change the first X tile to 8 rather than 9. For the movements within the prison, change X first by 0.6, then negative 0.6, 
then 0.6 and then again by negative 0.6. Alright, go upwards now to the out of prison code and here first broadcast a new message called yellow death and wait, then yellow death tick and wait and at the end yellow death end and wait. Perfect and that's pretty much it for the ghosts. Go to the explosion sprite and what we'll do here is fairly simple to explain. Once the Pac-Man eats a power food particle, it gains the ability to kill the ghosts. So this explosion will just be a simple animation in place of where the ghost was. If you see its costume, it's just a circle and we'll keep making this larger while simultaneously fading it out. Let's begin with the code. On receiving init grid, create a custom block called reset effects, making sure to run without screen refresh. Place this implementation after the message. Now we have to define the block. First, set the ghost effect to 40 and then the size to 100% and then hide. Very easy stuff and now we get to the main part. On receiving red death, the sprite must go to the red ghost and then reset effects and then hide. Good. Next is the red death tick message which is broadcasted a number of times. Each time, change size by 40% and then the ghost effect by 25. Great. We finally have the red death end message. This will be simple and short, just hide. That's the blueprint for a single ghost and we have to just use the same blueprint for the four of them. It's extremely straightforward and easy. We just have to change the go to block to each respective ghost. Great. Clean up and now it's time to program the remains. If you see its costume, you'd notice that it is just a tiny square. This will resemble a small chunk of a ghost when it is killed. And as the clones of the sprite fly away in all directions from the ghost, it will kind of give an effect of being shattered. Anyway, let's continue. On receiving init grid, within a repeat one, delete the clone and then hide. We're now going to create a bunch of clones, so create a new variable called clone for this sprite only. Set it to yes and then make a custom block called init clones, making sure to run without screen refresh. As the name implies, this block will be responsible for creating a bunch of clones. We can implement this after setting the variable and then set the clone variable back to no. It's now time to actually define this block. Here, repeat 20, just creating a clone each time. This isn't it. Each clone created will be slightly different. So when a clone is created, we'll be modifying the size, the ghost effect, the direction and also the velocity. We need a variable to store the velocity so create one called well for the sprite only. Add the well variable to the list of things that we need to randomize and now let's get to work. For the size it would be a random of 80 to 120. For the ghost effect it would be 30 to 60. For the direction negative 180 to positive 180. And finally for well, 5 to 6. Good. Like we did for the explosions, we will have to program the case for each ghost. So on receiving red death, check if clone is yes, then go to the red ghost and show. On receiving red death tick, move well steps, each time changing the ghost effect by 20. Finally, on receiving red death end, hide and then do the exact same thing we did while creating the clone. This should make sense. Essentially, during the first message, we position the clones. During the second message, we move the clones. And on the third message, we reset the clones. The rest is pretty straightforward. We just duplicate the code while making sure to change the case to the respective ghosts initially. It's a bit of work, but we can finish it quite fast given that we only need to duplicate it three times, namely for the pink, blue and yellow ghosts. Alright, now go into the Pac-Man sprite at the bottom of the main game script. This goes on until the game ends and after this, it would be nice if the Pac-Man faded away. 
we would also need to update the player1 variable to set up the end screen. So check if score is equal to number of food and if yes, set game over to yes and player1 also to be yes. This needs to be in the loop before incrementing tick. Outside the loop, check if player1 is no and if it is, repeat 4 each time changing the ghost effect by 25. After this, give a small lag of 0.5 seconds and then broadcast a new message called end screen. Pretty simple stuff. We don't need a separate case when the player loses because that's already covered in this message itself. The player one variable already distinguishes the two on its own. Okay, now go to the end screen. On receiving init grid, hide, then on receiving end screen, go to the front layer, checking if player 1 is yes. In the former case, we can switch the costume to you win, and in the latter case, switch it to you lose. Very easy stuff indeed. The costumes are quite simple, just the Pac-Man with some text. Getting back to the code, add a set ghost effect to 100 after this, so that we can create a fade-in animation. Show within a repeat 5, change ghost effect by negative 20 each time. Finally, at the end, wait for 4 seconds and then stop all. Nice, that concludes the end screen. All that's left now is the thumbnail. The costume is something quite minimalistic and feel free to edit this to something that you think would look better. The code here is even simpler. After init grid, go to x0, y0 and then set the ghost effect to 100%. Show and go to the front layer. After receiving start game within a forever loop, just go to the front layer each time. And yeah, that is it. The logic is pretty simple. When the stop button is pressed, all the effects, including the ghost effect, resets to a value of 0. This means that any sprite that was shown across the screen and was transparent, therefore invisible, would turn opaque and visible so long as it was always in the front layer. Okay, this is me after the edit and I realized I made a small mistake in the blue and yellow ghosts. Remember that we offset both of these to different sides of the prison to ensure that they didn't overlap the other ghosts. Essentially, after a ghost is killed, we need to repeat this exact same thing. So for the blue ghost, change x to 10, then go to the yellow ghost and change x to 8. And that is it. Test the program and there you go. We now have a complete recreation of Pac-Man. All the features we added in really do make a huge difference. It's really awesome to see the explosions and the Pac-Man slaying the ghost during invincibility. The end screens also work and it really ties up the game nicely. I sure as hell had a blast making this, and I hope you did too. If you enjoyed this game series, then click on the playlist on your screen right here, as that will take you to a brand new game segment. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.